Welcome gamers, welcome Z-Heads. My name is Linus and this is the first video of a series of videos I'm planning to make for Dawn of the Zeds 3rd edition. This will be tutorial videos starting with um, the easy run through the components and then follow the level system of the rulebook starting with some basic levels where you can play the first basic uh, game and then building up with some more videos until you can play the full game with all rules and everything that belongs to it. A quick note before I start. At the moment of shooting the game is not released. It's on Kickstarter. So whenever you watch this, these are all prototype components. This is a prototype, a paper map, which will be of course mounted and all the counters, all the cards you see, everything is prototype. The graphics and the artwork is already very pretty, so I think they're like 95% done. But you know, it'll still be half a year or so till this will be published or some month and there can always be changes, so keep this in mind when watching this. There might be some differences to your copy of the game, depending on when you watch this video. Okay, the first video I want to walk you through all the components, the maps, the cards, the counters, there are lots of counters, and um, just give you a quick overview and already explain some basic functions. So please don't skip it, you need this later on. And we start with the board. Actually, if you're not familiar with Zets, this game is about a town called Farmingdale, where a disease just spread out, turning people into zombie-like creatures called Zets. And they will approach the town center through different tracks and you have to defend the town center and um, try to clean up chaos. It's kind of a tower defense but not in the usual way that you just stand in here try to defend but you have to go outwards, you have to clean up some chaos, you have to forage for ammunition and yeah it's not just waiting for the Zets. So what do we see here? This is the main map, one side of the main map. I'll show you the other side later. And what you see here is the town center of Farmingdale, of course, and four tracks. We have the forest track here, we have the suburbs track here, the mountain track here, and the highway track here. You'll notice that all tracks have spaces you can move along and of course the Zeds will move along. There are also um, so-called name spaces, so all spaces with names like St. Thomas here, Farm, the Mall District, Farmingdale, Beauville. These are called named spaces and they are a bit easier to defend, which you can see on these icons here. This is what I tell you in the second video. And there will be also some villages starting in some of the outside villages, those in yellow here. The cards and game terms will often refer to specific tracks, which will be the forest track. And the forest track is, as I said, the full track, including the town center. Uh, so the town center belongs to all tracks. There are some special spaces like the laboratory which is not part of any track, but the science hero can go in there and do some research. Maybe you can find a super weapon, which will be marked here in this space. There's the Farmingdale General Hospital, also not a part of any track, where injured people will end up, if they not end up here in the cemetery, and also two spaces for hospital staff plus a refugee camp where all the refugees that make it to the town center will be placed and maybe can be recruited to help you in your fight against the Zeds. Your main goal is to defend the town center 
As soon as Z's unit enters the town center, you lose the game. You can also lose the game if there is too many chaos. I'll show you that later. And you win the game by defending the town center over a specific time, which is determined by the event card stack. And yeah, the last card there will be an end card. And the National Guards will hopefully have arrived at that point to help you. Down here are a bunch of tracks, a jail and just a place where you can place your different developments of the super weapon. There are four developments, more about that later. The most important tracks are those four. This is the action track. Here you have a marker and you will track how many actions you have per round. Then a supplies track which goes from 1 to 10, but you can flip over the counter and you can go up to 20, but that's all you can get. And you're really lucky if you get there. Then you have an ammunition track marked with this bullet marker. This can also be flipped over to the plus 10 side, so a maximum of 20 ammunition. And the infection track which shows you the infection rate and if infection goes too high you can see on this icon bad things are gonna happen. You won't be using all of these tracks in your first game in the base game but I just wanted to have a quick run through so that you know that for later. There's also a set actions track, we'll get to that later. This is this side of the board. I'll show you the other side. This is the other side of the board, uh, which is the same up here, all the four tracks and the town center, but here we have a fifth track, the tunnel track, which is special in some ways and pretty dangerous and you can get lost in these catacomb spaces. And as you can see, there's no place to keep track of your ammo supplies and so on. So there's an additional tracking board, which kind of copies what we just saw on the other side of the board. You can place it just to the side of the board and again keep track of action, supplies, ammo, super weapon, jail and so on. That's the main board. Okay, next we have some player aid sheets, one for each player and it shows various things. It shows a sequence of play which we'll go through in the next videos the actions you can take as the human player, a foraging table, so what you can find in certain spaces of the board. Then two tables, one for gunfire attack and one for hand-to-hand -hand combat, and a basic layout of the combat procedure, some modifiers down here, and on the back there's an overview of the icons. The different game levels are color-coded. I'll show you later in the cards. We have some modifiers. We have the five icons of the track, forest, suburbs, tunnel, mountain, highway, resources. You already know those three. Other icons and some abilities of special Zed's units. There are also some additional help cards of units that will appear during the game. The major units like the heroes and the heroic civilians will have their own character card of course, but these are just some help cards for some special units that will appear every now and then, like let's say the VIP survivors or Bubba's band or what do we have, some raiders security guards, Petra's angels, motorcycle gang, so all nice handy cheat sheets for the special units. The next thing I want to show you are the hero cards, hero and heroic civilians. These are all different heroes and heroic civilians you can play, so this is a bunch of characters. Each character has its own card, with some information on the front side 
and background story on the backside and it also shows the marker for the unit like this. I'm going to go through one of these cards to show you some details. First we have the color coding I already talked about. The blue color is for the first levels of gameplay and later on you will add more cards. The green gets added for level 2, level 3 will be the, the yellow cards and then the red cards and the dark red cards. So you get more and more character, you start with the easier ones with the blue level, that's the blue mark here. Then you have an icon which shows which kind of character it is. Captain Piazza is military with military icon. The shovel here means scavenger. Then we have a law enforcement unit, the sheriff with his sheriff badge and so on. A civic, just a regular civilian. In addition there are different stats. The top left one is the unit's strength on its healthy side, which is the front of the counter, a 3. Once it takes enough wounds, it flips over to the weak side, and it's of course weaker, and that's the second number here, shows the weak side. This always corresponds with the token, the front and the back. Then we have movement. She can move five spaces, he can move four spaces. Most of the heroes can move four. Pickles is a dog, he can move faster. And that's the movement value. And of course each character has a bunch of individual abilities explained below here. Then there are also some heroic civilians, which is a group of people like here, the Savior Corps. They have a different shape counter and a bit of a different behavior. Usually they are weaker. You can see two strength on the strong side and one strength on the weak side. They are a bit slower. They have some abilities and they are just right in between the heroes and the regular civilians. Regular civilians look like this, so without any logo. And there are no cards for the regular civilians because they're kind of always the same and don't have many special rules. But there's this handy dandy little reference card if you want to know about these guys. What you can see here on this card is a wound icon, the heart, a, an arrow, another wound icon and a cross. And this means that the unit can take one wound. If it takes another wound, it's flipped over to its weak side. There it can take another wound. And if it then takes another wound, it's out of the game for now. Either dead or in the hospital. And all this is also on the character tokens. The heart here and the cross here. Okay? That's the same with all characters, even with the Zeds. There are some villagers. These guys look like this. And they start in the villages you saw on the outsides on the track. And they will stay there defiantly until the first Zeds arrives there. And only then they will turn over and will turn into fleeing refugees which hopefully, with your help, make it to the refugee camp you saw on the top right of the card. Now let's have a look at our enemies. Our enemies usually sleep inside this bag or in a cup or wherever and are drawn randomly and those are the Zed's units. The Zed's units also have two sides. The counters are pretty Similar, you have a strong side, like 2, 4, 4, which is weak because they can go up to 9. Let's see if I can find a stronger one. 7, 6, okay, that's more annoying. And they can flip over to the weak side, just like uh, the other units. But they can take more hits. You can see there are two hearts here. 
So they can take two hits on this side and the third hit will flip them over. Another two hits on this side and then the next hit, so the sixth hit in total will actually kill them again <laughs> or finally. Usually they will start somewhere outside here and work their way into Farmingdale. And again, as soon as a Zed's unit arrives in the town center, you lose the game. But that's not enough because we have some special Zed's unit. They will appear every now and then. They are a bit larger, of course, a bit stronger, and they have some special abilities. So this is what you saw on the back of the player aid. Here are the Super Zeds with their names and special abilities like the tough ability shown on this unit. And then we have another bunch of counters. I just sorted them in this box. The box does not come with the game, I'm pretty sure. And just to give an overview, it's a lot of stuff, which is a lot of fun, of course. And I just wanted to show you some more of those, like the Chaos Markers. Zeds will leave Chaos. Once a Zed enters one of those named spaces, it will leave a Chaos Marker. The problem is there are only 12. And... If you have to place another Chaos Marker and there is none to place, you got none left, so 12 on the board and another one to place, you lose the game because just the Chaos spreads and is uncontrollable. So take care of this and this is one of the reasons why you cannot just stay in Town Center because you have to clean up the mess. Then we have some special characters, they are like here. There will appear sometimes some raiders, a ra a rangers, then we have Petra's Angels, a motorcycle gang I already mentioned, and oh, these are the rangers, and so on and so on. Special refugees, VIP refugees, you get a bonus if you can guide them to the town center. So this is this box here, a lot of special units then there are you already saw the wound counters with the one on the one side and the two on the other side some um, EKG counters when you're to mark when you're in hospital and there are all those barricades you can build nice little barricade standees and they will help you with defense I already showed you this is a defense value of a named space and you can see this is 1 and this is 2 so the defense is plus 1 when the barricade is here. There's also some kind of special barricade, strong point that belongs to a character. Then we have the, the super weapon discoveries you can make for different kind of discoveries for the super weapon. Oh sorry, it's five. And a lot of other counters to show you some upgrades of your civilians or unfortunately upgrades for Zeds, a marker for goodies, where to find goodies or no entry spaces that are just blocked for a round. And you have these two standees disease spreading Zeds, they are special Zeds units, they are weaker but they spread the disease faster each time they move, they will increase the infection. But this is already going pretty much into detail. So the last thing you need to see are the cards, in addition to the character cards of course. These are three different kind of cards. The research cards, I will not go into detail here because research comes in later. Actually, for those who know the second edition, the research was a track. Now it's a stack of cards. And when you 
successfully research, you flip over the next card and you see what you get, what you achieved and also what you need to roll for your next research. And there will always be just some of these cards in the deck so it will be different each time. Which is the case for all of these decks. There are huge decks and usually there are only half of the cards or a third of them in the game so each game will be totally different and kind of unpredictable. Next are Fate cards. A bunch of Fate cards and you can see here they are also color coded. Blue, green, yellow, orange, orange and red depending on the level you play. So we'll start, we'll start with the blue level, the first introduction level. And every now and then you'll have to draw a card to see where something is happening. Another card will tell you, draw a fate card to see where this and this happens. So it says where, forest track, where, highway track and so on. And then there'll be, be a fated event which is either good or bad for you. The hold for later cards are usually cards you can hold and play later for a benefit or play this card which is usually something bad like supply and ammo losses. There are a lot of surprises in here. And the most important cards are the event cards because they are kind of driving you through the game same here, you have the blue coding, color coding, and then the green ones and the yellow ones. So for the base game, you only use the blue ones. You see the stars here. These are different acts. So at the start of the game, you put together a stack of event cards. And there are four piles and Act 1 is on top, then comes Act 2, Act 3, Act 4. And then we have an end card, one of these two end cards. Of course there are more end cards for the other levels. And if you make it to the end card and through the end card, you'll win the game. Also, these cards show you the full turn structure. So you draw an event card and then you start with the 4R phase, then you start with the infection phase, then there's the consumption phase where you have to eat, then comes the Zs phase which usually show you where new Zs appear, these are the icons of the tracks you saw before, and then the action phase is the player action phase and this shows you how many base action points you get. You get some more and not each card shows one, three, three, two, <laughs> okay. There will also be some special events and you can see on this tab here it shows you in which phase it happens. Most of them will happen in the Z phase but you can see here this happens in the action phase. There are some special cards with the exclamation mark here which will be always in the stack and a lot of these will be random. That's it for this video because this already goes into rules and gameplay and this is what I want to cover in the next video. So I hope you had fun and see you in the next video. Bye!